Well, if you're familiar with Lake Fork, you know it gets fished a lot. How does that pressure impact the fish? In tonight's Hooked on East Texas, we tag along with a team of biologists studying the human impact on fish in Lake Fork. Charlie Nasser has been fishing Lake Fork for a long time. I fished it since the beginning. Nasser's experience tells him where the bigger fish are and where they're not. But a few years back, he noticed a change. The bigger fish on Lake Fork weren't where they used to be. It seemed they moved, so Nasser moved. For most of us, uh, especially in the summertime, you adjust to, to points and drop-offs and, and things of that nature. So the fish have migrated out of that hydrilla now and, and are on more like the points and the, and the stumps. But did the fish really move or was there more? Where are all the largemouth bass on fork? Good metrics are things that when you're when you're fishing that will really help anglers again. Enter Jake Norman. He's the Tyler District Supervisor for the Texas Inland Fisheries Division. Uh, clearly something was going on, so we wanted to come up with an idea of a project to maybe answer that question. So fisheries biologists caught a couple dozen of these bass, carefully inserted a tiny radio transmitter into their bellies, and released them back into Lake Fork. The whole purpose of this study is really trying to get some information out to the anglers about what fish in a heavily pressured water body like Lake Fork do throughout the whole year. Using telemetry equipment. Start scanning with this antenna, we can actually pinpoint directly where this fish is going to be as you start adjusting that sensitivity. They locate the fish included in the study. They drop a radar device into the water and pinpoint the fish's location, either on the bottom or suspended in the water. Is the fish alone or are the fish in a school? These are all questions that anglers think when they're out fishing and it helps them kind of put a pattern together, target fish to really try and put a good day together. Biologists then idle the boat near the fish to see if the boat scares the fish off. If it doesn't, then Norman gets to cast five times near the fish to see how the fish reacts to a lure or the vibration of the lure. Trying to just put every piece of information together that could possibly be affecting angler success. The research wraps up this spring, but two key takeaways are emerging from this study. If you've been fishing with your dad or you fish with your sons, you've probably told them or been told to be quiet because the fish can sense that you're nearby, so you have to be really quiet. Well, it's different out here on the lake, of course, but what this study has found is that the fish are really sensitive to noise, but in this case, it's boat noise. Did we go past somewhere? I think another really interesting component is how little most of these fish move, whether they're shallow or deep fish. This way. We've seen some of these fish stay within a 200 yard radius throughout the entire year, no matter if it's the water temps 100 degrees out or 50 degrees. All great information that a fisherman like Charlie Nasser can use as his bass fishing year gets underway. I've been killing a crappie. That's what I've been doing, crappie fishing. But this year, this is one of my first trips out 